Aradhya, I hope you are typing. Please paste the chat links again. Pujama. Okay, children, let me quickly tell you about the flow of the session. So first of all, you will get to know your mentor and then you will see a short PPT about the course details. Okay. And after that, you will see a short virtual tour of the dashboard. And after that, if you are still left with a query or a doubt, you can always ask the same. We will be happy to answer. Okay. So I hope the flow of the session is clear to you. Is it? Show me a thumbs up if it is. Okay. All right. Uh, so how many of you are joining us for the first time? Can you type F in the chat section? And those who have been with us before also can type B. So Aradhya is joining us for the first time. Ashaz has been with us before also. Same is the case with Shravya. And same is the case with Mohana. Okay. So Aradhya, from uh, where did you come to know about us? What is your source of information? Can you type in the chat section? Is it mail or FB or Insta or friend or parent or school, whatever? Okay. Parent, parents. Okay. Nice to know. All right. So now uh, let me tell you children that we have with us Dr. Usha Banerjee. She is a highly experienced, very seasoned, wonderful mentor. You know, her classes are not only very interesting, but also very informative. And I'm sure you're going to love her sessions and you will gain conceptual clarity uh, after your interaction with her. With each passing day, I think uh, your discussion will lead you to more conceptual clarity. She loves to interact with kids like you and she's got substantial experience. So now I'll request her to speak to you directly. All over yeah. Thank you so much, Monica. Uh, good evening to all of you, Asha, Shravya, Mohuna, Radhya. And first of all, to answer Ashaj's question, I have a PhD in computer science. So I have a doctorate degree in computer science. And I'm with Olympiad Success for many years now. And I have done uh, numerous batches of children from class 6 to class 10. And there have been batches of children who have done class 6, 7, 8. And now this year they have appeared for the class 10 board exams also. So my way of teaching is uh, I focus on helping you to understand the concepts. I strongly believe that in science and maths, you have to understand and question everything. And only then can you, you know, at, uh, uh, you know answer questions of whether it's Olympiads or whether it's NTSC or even your school exams. Any unknown question you can solve only when you have understood the concepts very well. If you just learn up things and you know just mug it up, it will not work, not for science and maths. I focus on clearing the concepts and this I will do in this uh, class also, in the level two preparation course also. So my emphasis is clearing on the concepts and I give loads of examples from practical day-to-day -day life so that you can relate to it when you are solving the questions. And you know, I like the, I like the fact that Asha said, I don't, uh, I know only of biology, I don't know chemistry and physics. In fact, I think many of you, your little children still, many of you really don't know what is the meaning of physics or what is the meaning of the word chemistry. So during my you know, classes, I will clarify everything and what we are doing. The important thing is what we are doing, why we are, if you're studying electricity, why, what, what is the use of it? That is my focus, right? And the demo today will be definitely, all of you are in mute. I can see that I'm in fourth grade. So as Dr. Monica rightly said that Ashas, you will get to know of everything 
in the right time <laughs> there's no need to you know rush off with things and uh, don't worry you'll get to know everything in the uh, right time and in the right uh, you know class standard also so in, in today's demo you will possibly be on mute but in the classes my class is always very interactive and you can actually you know use the whiteboard also so i prefer children who ask questions in the class if you don't ask a question i will ask you so that is the way i do it and uh, i hope i get to see all of you in the actual classes which will begin soon thank you so much thank you so much ma'am now children i'll be sharing my screen just a moment and then we are good to go so i believe my screen is visible to all okay a very warm welcome to each one of you to the demo and interaction program for class 6 science olympiad level 2 batch 2 so as you are already aware olympiad success is india's largest online preparation platform for olympiad exams olympiad success live is india's first exclusive live classes for olympiad's preparation and school plus by olympiad success is one of its own kind of annual program you know that includes eight important courses which include mathematics english science logical reasoning communication both spoken and written vedic math and coding here you can get online cbse and olympiad classes for grades 6 to 10 one on one preparation classes for international mathematics olympiads like sasmo cmo hkimo timo math counts us common core math competition math kangaroo and prmo so you can meet our international rank holders for the year 2021 22 on the screen they are all brilliant kids like you so classes are going to be group sessions with batch size of around 20 students delivered through zoom by seasoned tutors you've already met your mentor usha ma'am so you get five sessions per week tuesday wednesday thursday saturdays and sundays timing will be 6:30 to 7:45 pm note this down there will be 5 minutes of break in between the session which will include topic wise quick revision of chapters and discussion on previous year level 2 questions you get access to reading material and practice questions available on the dashboard and also level 2 topic wise mock test for science now how to access those you will learn very shortly from pooja ma'am who will take you through a virtual tour of the dashboard now syllabus is available at this particular link for class 6 science and fees can be paid by clicking on this particular link don't worry all the important and relevant links have already been pasted in the chat section and will again be pasted for you to avail now the fees for this course is rupees 4500 it is going to be a 20 session course and the fees includes online classes daily reading notes and exercises practice of previous year level 2 questions access to olympiad success platform for science okay so all that you require for these classes is a laptop or a desktop with good internet speed headphones for better audio clarity and your camera should be on throughout the session okay so in 2020 21 olympiad success had students from more than 3800 schools across india and abroad hailing from 35 plus countries now the live classes for this particular batch begins from 9th of january tuesday onwards so i hope you've noted down all the relevant details now i would request pooja ma'am to take you through a virtual tour all over to you ma'am thank you so much monica ma'am hello everyone how are you all okay let me take you through our dashboard tour let me share my screen i hope my screen is visible to everybody all right so kids moment first you have to just type this olympiadsuccess.com and after this you'll get this uh, user email id icon page on your screen so over here you have to just fill your correct user email and password today's examination is made to mathematics Okay. make sure that you filling a correct user email id password otherwise your mock test will not be open over here yes so after this you'll get a personal detail details on your screen you need to check all are correct if there are some errors that you can just rectify it and then you can just update it over here 
by clicking it on update icon okay after this you have to just go on worksheet icon you can just click it over here then you'll be going to select the subject today we are attending a science uh, demo so we'll be going to click on science mock test after this we'll be going to go over here on take exam click on take exam icon and then just read the instructions carefully and properly and then just click on this icon start worksheet after clicking on start worksheet you will get all the questions on your screen so turn wise turn you have to just select a correct answer of your question so all over you will get 50 questions of uh, your worksheet in your worksheet and then like this is your answer for example i'm just filling it randomly but you make sure that you just fill it the correct one okay so after moving on next question filling your first question you have to move on next question then you'll click on next icon so once you're done with your second question and then you'll click on next icon to just move on third question so after once you're done with all the questions then you'll be going to move on finish button then you'll be going to click it on finish button make sure before clicking on finish button you review all your questions that your answers are correct right so then you'll be going to click it on yes i have reviewed all questions and now i'm curious to see my performance right so here you can click on later and then i'll be going to click it on performance icon where is which is right under the worksheet and then over here again after clicking on performance i am going to click it over here because i need to select my subject in which subject i have given the mock test right so after clicking this paper i have attempted so i'll be going to click it on view button so here is my performance i have attempted three questions which all are wrong right because i have just attempted a demo to show you but you should make sure that you'll be going to select the correct answers that you should get a complete full marks all right hope everybody is clear with the dashboard tour if still you have doubt feel free to put your questions in the chat box i'll be happy to answer that let me stop sharing my screen thank you so much monica ma'am over to you thank you so much puja ma'am any doubt anyone shravya aradhya mohana ashas any doubt anyone no doubts okay then tell me the days on which we have the classes. Type in the chat section the days, class days. So Mohona is saying Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Ashaz is saying Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. So who do you think is right in the response? Whose response is correct? Aradhya and Shravya? Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, Aradhya Singh. Shravya? We've got three different responses on this for the same question. So we need to gain conceptual clarity on this. Okay, Shravya is saying Tuesday, Wednesday, and I think this is Thursday, and Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So, except Monday and Friday, we have classes on all the days, okay? So, you can now understand that it is rest of the days, Tuesdays, Wednesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. All right. And what will be the class timing? 6.30 to 7.45 p.m. Do you agree, disagree with Ashas? Yes, 6.30 to 7.45 p.m. is the correct answer. And how many sessions are going to be there? Overall, 20, Ashaz is saying. Is that correct? Mona is also saying 20. Anybody else? Aradhya Shravya? 
Is it 20 or 25 or 16? Shravya is also saying 20. Yes, 20 is the correct answer, everyone. Very good. That means you were paying attention and you were attentive during the PPT. Nice to know. All right, then. Uh, any doubt, any query, please feel free to ask. We'll be happy to answer. Any doubt, anyone? No? Then shall we begin with the demo? Show me a thumbs up if you are ready for the demo. Okay, Mohona and Aradhya and Ashaz are ready. What about Shravya? Divya, please switch on your camera. Divya, please switch on your camera because we do not allow students without video in the class. Shravya, are you ready? Show me a thumbs up, everyone. And a big smile if you are ready for the demo. And those who are not switching on the cameras, I'm afraid I will put you in the waiting room then. Divya, please switch on your camera. So I think we can begin with the demo now. So Usha, ma'am, yeah. all over to you. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you so much, Pooja. And I see many thumbs up. So I think without taking much time, so I will begin with the demo. Okay. Uh, just a second. So for today's demo, I was thinking somebody told that they like physics as a subject. Though, you know, in class six, I understand there is a distinction of physics, chemistry and biology, but not as apparent as in the higher classes. So what I've decided is that I will, you know, the way we do it, we will do it in the regular classes. I will take it in that way only. So basically, as you can, is my screen visible? So we'll do a short demo on electricity and circuits. I know that now we are in January 2024. And yes, all of you wishing you a very happy new year. And we are starting the new year. And by now, I'm sure, you know, in most of your schools, you have finished possibly the syllabus. And most of you have finished doing this chapter also. So for today's demo, what I will do is I will take you through some questions. So you are preparing for the level two Olympiad exams, right? So I will actually take you through some questions and we'll together try to solve the questions. And while doing the questions also, I will explain to you as to, you know, the concepts of it. Right. And when also for the demo class, I know that all of you are on mute. So whatever doubt, you know, problem you have, you can type it in the chat window. But for the for the real for the actual classes, you need not be on mute and you can just, you know, unmute yourself and ask any question at any point of time. So without delay, first question is my screen visible, everybody? Thumbs up. Great. So which of the following statements about the circuit is correct? This is a question from the level two Olympiad exam. Uh, I will give you two minutes time for you to try to do the answer yourself. Nobody type anything in the chat window now. I just want all of you to write question number one and if possible, try to solve it yourself. Otherwise I'll tell you how to solve it. So I don't know if you, by now you should be knowing it, but just, you know, to clarify, I'll give you first two minutes, all of you, you, I'm sure you have a, you know, copy and a pen with you or a pencil with you, sit with a copy and a paper or a paper and a pencil with you. And first you write down the answer of this question, then I will tell you how to answer this question. So I'll give you two minutes time for you to think about the answer to this question. Yeah, you can send me a direct message with your answer if you want, like Ashaz has sent, sent. Send me a direct message, yeah. Okay, Shravya, okay, I got your answer. Aradhya, Mohana. So I got two answers. I'm waiting for the answers from... Uh, Aradhya and Mohana, at least try. See, there's no problem in getting it wrong. At least try. Okay, I got the answer from Mohana. Aradhya. 
no apps this is not a test nothing there's no harm if you get it wrong i'm not going to tell who gave the right answer and who gave the wrong answer okay for the demo class i'll just discuss how to solve this correctly Aradhya, what is your answer to this question? Okay, as long as Aradhya sends off his answer, now let me basically tell you, you know, how to solve this. So this is, a, what is this? This is a cell. Just a second. So this is the cell and a group of cells. Okay, Aradhya, I got your answer. Great. So this is a cell and a group of cell is called a battery. So when we are drawing a circuit, if I want to represent battery, I will represent it either like this or I can also put dot, dot and this. So both of them, this is the diagram for representing a battery. Now this L1, this is a symbol for a bulb. Sometimes we use this and or this. So this is the symbol for drawing a electrical bulb in a circuit. So sometimes it is either this or this also is correct. Now this, this symbol here that you see, which is like this. So this is an open switch. A switch is simply like the switch in your house, which you switch on your fan, switch on your light. And if it's a closed switch, this is referred to as a closed switch. Everybody knows this, all of these symbols, right? So this is the first step. Ashas don't know. Ah, oh. <laughs> anyway, you're in grade four, right? No issues. So you before for drawing an electrical circuit, you have to know the symbols very well. Otherwise, you can't understand the meaning of this question. So first of all, you have to understand these symbols. All of you, the, the rest of you understood the symbols. Now, whenever you have, so this, this long line is the positive terminal of the cell. And this is the negative terminal. For positive, I you, you normally use, write it like this. And for negative, so every cell has two terminals, one positive and one negative. Electricity flows from where to where? So electricity flows from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal of a cell. Everybody knows this? So this arrow represents the flow of electricity, right? So, and these lines that you see, these are nothing but electrical wires. What are electrical wires made up of normally? Yes, type it in the chat window. Yes, what are electrical wires made up of? Very good, Mohana. So electrical wires are usually made up of copper because copper is a good conductor of electricity. Okay. So all of these lines that you see here are nothing but simple electrical wires, right? So everything clear till now? Any doubts, you can just type in the chat window because you can't unmute today. Till here, everybody understood? So basically what happens, okay, so electricity, this is the positive terminal, negative terminal. So electricity flows like this. So for electricity to flow, a circuit must be closed, complete and closed. So the word closed means the switches have to be closed. So which means that the current flows like this. So this switch S2 has to be closed. If you want the current to flow like this, S2, you, S2 have to be closed. If you want the current to flow like this, S3 has to be closed. And then the switch current, if you want the current to flow through this, S1 has to be closed, right? Now, this is the basic fundamentals of an electric circuit. Now let's look into the options. 
the first option says that lamp L1 will light when either L2 or L3 are lighted. So which means electricity flows like this. L2 is lighted means S2 is closed. So if L2 is lighted, then this will go. So this one is correct. So the circuit is complete. So electricity flows in this part of the circuit. So that is correct. Right? Understood? So when L2 lights up, so when L2, the when L2 lights up, so which means that S2 is closed. Now the second part of the question says that what happens when L3 lights up, right? So what I will do is I will just rub off this part. So I will show you what happens when L3 is, you know, I'm changing the color. Uh, yes, Shravya, let's wait. So I'll just take your question. So L3 is lighting up. So when L3 lights up, this means that switch S3 is closed. So which means that current flows current flows like this. So current flows through this part of the circuit. So therefore, the correct answer of this question, so which means that option A is correct. Now, let me go into the answers which you have sent me. Okay, some of you have sent me, you know, some answers. So, um, Asha's without even understanding, you typed A. A is the right answer, Shravya A. I'm not saying who is wrong and who is right. So, the option number B is not correct. Electricity flows when all the switches are closed. This option is not correct. So, S1 need not be closed. And even then, electricity will flow. So therefore, option number B is not correct. Option number C, current flowing through L1 and L2 are equal. No. Can you tell me how are L2 and L3 connected? Anybody? So L2 and L3 are in parallel. You know what are parallel circuits and series circuit? And L1 is in series. So because of this, this is not the correct answer. Electricity will flow as long as any one switch is closed. Electricity will flow as long as any one switch is closed. Um, so, so if you consider this option, yeah. So basically the correct option of this question is number A. Electricity will flow as long as any one switch is closed. Actually, you know, this option is also correct. Option D is also correct. So if you have marked option D, you are right. So both option A and option B are correct. But the Olympiad answer was option A, but D is also correct. Even if one switch is closed, the current will flow through this part of the circuit. So if you have written option D also, your answer is correct. Clear? Understood? Okay. Okay. Now look at question number two. Frank created a circuit tester as shown below because he wanted to test the electrical conductivity of some materials. Okay. He connected points S and T to the material that he was testing. However, his teacher told him that his circuit tester will not work. What can Frank do to make this make his circuit tester uh, will allow him to know if a material he is testing is a conductor or not? So I already got Mona's answer. I want the answer from everybody. Shravya has given me two answers. Uh, what about the answers from everybody? I need the answer from everybody. 
So Aradhya, Kaira, Kaira, welcome to the class. Kaira, please turn on your camera, your video camera. Yes. And the rest of you, yeah, I got the answer from Kaira. What about the others? Mohana, what is the answer? Mohana, what is your answer? Okay. Aradhya, what is your answer? Yes, Aradhya. Okay, while Aradhya gives his answer, okay, he, got, he gave me his answer. Now, in science, whether it's physics, chemistry, and biology, we perform several experiments, right? So, so this is one such experiment or a test. Suppose you have to perform a test, okay? For performing any test, so how do you see whether your test is happening or not? You have to have what we call as visual observations. So visual observations means the color has to change. There can be some odor. There ca can be some lights or switch getting off or on. There can be some movement and then you can have some measurement. So they said that this is a circuit tester to test whether a material is a good conductor or not. So in this tester circuit, what is this? This is a cell and these are the two terminals, right? So these are nothing but the two terminals of the circuit. Now, if I want to know, and this is the wire which I'm testing. So I wrote wire to be tested. So I'm trying to see whether this wire which I'm trying to test is a good conductor or not. How will I know that? Nothing is happening, right? You have a circuit, there's no color, there's no odor, nothing is happening. So whether electricity, what is a conductor? A conductor is a material through which electricity can flow very easily, right? So how do I know if electricity can flow through this conductor? A conductor in this case is nothing but the wire. So how do I know if the if electricity is flowing through this conductor or this wire? So the best answer to this is add a bulb. This is the correct option. So if the bulb glows, I'm writing here. So if the bulb glows, which means that my test is successful. So which means that the wire is a good conductor of electricity. And if the bulb does not glow, which means that, what is the opposite of conductor? Insulator, that's correct. So the opposite of conductor is insulator. So if the bulb does not glow, which means that the wire is an insulator, which means it does not allow electricity through flow through it. Now, Somebody gave the answer as a switch. A switch simply allows you to control the circuit. Suppose I tell you, now it's winter, we don't need the fan. But what say I tell you switch on the light. So the switch that is in your house is nothing but it helps you to control the circuit. So when you have a switch, what happens? You can switch on the light or fan or microwave or air conditioner or even your laptop charger. So a switch is nothing but a controlling device. So in this case, what we need is an appliance which helps us to see. So if current flows, the bulb will glow, otherwise the bulb will not glow. And using a shorter wire and two batteries really doesn't make any sense. Clear everybody? Thumbs up if you have understood. Clear? Okay, moving on to question number three. This is a, you know, in the Olympiad exams or in any competitive exams, uh, one child has joined. Uh, welcome, Arush. 
We have already started the demo class. You missed up a bit, but you can see the recording. Arush, could you turn on your video camera, please? It is, uh, you know, compulsory in the class to turn on your video camera. Arush? Yes, thank you, Arush. So you have missed out a little bit. We started exactly at 6.30. So you can see the recording later on. So in Olympiads and in competitive exams, they give these big kind of questions because reading the question will take some time. So time again is when, what is the meaning of lit and unlit? Lit is when the bulb is switched on and unlit is when the bulb is not switched on. So on and off. So simply put, lit means the bulb is on and unlit means the bulb is off. So Hilda set up an electric circuit with three new batteries, three working bulbs and two switches as shown in the diagram. Which of the following is or are correctly observed when Hilda controlled the switches S1 and S2? So what is the correct observation? I want all of you to uh, type in your answers. This question will take some time because it is a lengthy question and you have to try out all the options really. So it's okay if it takes time, time, but I see the real reason, I can, I can tell you the answer in a minute and tell you the reasoning also, explanation also. But it's very important for you to be able to do it yourself because in the exam, you have to do it yourself. So it's very important to develop the, when you see a question, how do you, you know, you know, try to answer it? That's very, very important. And that's what you, it's, it's taught in these course, how to answer the question. So we have two switches here in this circuit, S1 and S2, and there are options. Let's look at, you know, till now I have not, I'll give you two more minutes time. Try it yourself, everybody, and give me the answer. Type in your answer in the chat window. Okay, I got from Aradia. No harm in trying. No harm in trying. Okay, I got the answer from uh, Kaira and Mohana. Shravya. Okay, fine. So let me explain how is this to be solved, right? So there are two switches, S1 and S2, and there are three bulbs. Let's look at option A. Switch S1 is open and switch S2 is open. If both, so where is the current flow? The current will flow like this. So it will go like this and also like, so current as I already explained flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the cell. So if switch S1 and S2 are open, which means that current switch S1 and S2 are open. So this is open, which means current cannot flow like this. So, you know, I'm showing it in this way current cannot flow through this one. And if S2 is open, current cannot flow through. So only the bulb, so I can see that. So, so which means A is not the correct option. Look at option number uh, B. So if S1 is closed, so this is closed. So which means electric current will flow like this. So if B is closed, then the bulb B1 will be unlit, which is correct. Unlit means off. B2 will be lit, correct. And B3 will be unlit, which is correct. So therefore, option number B is the right answer. Let's look at option number C also. We are saying that, I'm just changing the color. So option number C is saying that switch S1 is open. Switch S1 is open, which means that bulb B2 cannot, you know, uh, B2 will be off, which is correct. But then you have uh, S2 is closed. So bulb B1 and B3. Bulb B1 and B3. If S2 is closed, bulb B1 and B3 will be lit. And then again, we have option number D, where both of the switches are closed. This is incorrect. So the correct option is option number B. Right? 
so this is the way in which you have to solve the questions so what will we do in the actual classes okay i, I don't know if you have seen the schedule in the actual classes the first class we will discuss a little bit about the topic all the important formula all the important concepts whatever your doubts are and in the next class we will do a mock test you have 20 sessions right so every class we will discuss one chapter and in the next class we will discuss the mock test and the mock questions that is how we will go about it look at this question travis set up an electrical circuit as shown in the diagram below the bulb did not light up what should travis do to make the bulb light up and why so as i told you for electricity to pass through it is very important that the circuit should be complete so electricity always flows in a complete circuit so that is very very essential so in this question i think most of you have already given the answer of this question so basically in this question what happens is that so if you notice that uh, okay i got the answer from arush also change the bulb because it is faulty no change the batteries because they are flat no flat means the you know chemicals inside the battery have got exhausted the answer that the b is not the answer connect the wire z instead of y here is z if you have noticed because it closes the circuit okay and the next d option is connect the switch arm to x instead of z because it closes the circuit okay the correct answer in this case yeah most of you have given it correctly the the simple logic the simple logic is that for the circuit to work the circuit has to be complete so connect the switch arm to x instead of z because it then closes the circuit is the right option right okay this is another big question try it yourself the diagram shows an electric circuit in which order must the switches be closed so that the bulb a lights up first followed by b and then c i didn't understand the last to last question shavya okay kaira if you have to leave you can leave last to last question is this one right shavya last to last question is the question of hilda right so basically in this question what happens is yeah so when you have to tell the correct option right with three new batteries three working bulbs and two switches so out of all these options you have to tell basically which of the option is correct so here option b is the correct answer if you close switch s1 so which means that current will flow like this and if switch s2 is open so if you if you uh, so if s2 is open this is open right so current will flow only through this part of the circuit which means that b bulb is on but b1 b2 is on b2 b, uh, b1 and b3 are off unlit means it's off shavya did you understand shavya just give me a thumbs up if you have understood okay no problems in the in the actual classes you know you can um, this the no there's no question of mute try this one now uh, all of you the diagram shows an electric circuit in which order must the switches be closed so that bulb a so first i want a then i want b and then i want c Yes, these are see. We all of you have done the level one. Yes, I got the answer from Arush. So definitely, the level two questions definitely will be more complicated, more difficult. All of all the rest of you try it at least. The level two paper will be difficult. The level two questions will be difficult. So your concepts have to be absolutely clear. Okay, I got the answer from Shabia. so i want bulb a to light up first and then b and then c 
So as I told you, this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. So which means current has to flow uh, through this. Current has to flow like this. So this is the path of electricity. And here also, so this is the path in this way. You know, you see, you know, notice something, okay? Whenever I have a circuit, the first, what I'm doing, the first task, I am drawing the path of the current using arrows. That is always the wisest thing to do. So whenever you get a question on electrical circuits, first draw all the arrows. So if I want bulb number A to be lit first, so I have to put on switch Z first. So bulb A will be closed, will be lit first when switch Z is closed first. Then what I have to do, I have to switch X, close switch X. So this is, so Z is the first switch, X is the second switch, and obviously Y is the third switch. Therefore, the correct option is option D. This is actually a simple question if you know the answer. Now, why is this question difficult? As I told you, this question becomes complex because the circuit is complex. You have to know the path of the electricity. Then, then it's nothing. Right? Any Everybody clear on this? Okay. Okay, study the circuit given below. Which bulb, if fused, will result in two other bulbs lighting up in the circuit? I need an answer from all of you. So which means that what is this question saying? So one bulb, if it is fused, then what will happen? Then two bulbs will glow. Yeah, I got the answer from Ashaz and I also got it from Arush. Uh, everybody else? Try it, try it, no issues. Mohana? Arush, okay. Okay, I got the answer twice from Arush. Okay, fine. So what did I tell you? So whenever you get a circuit, first of all, this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal, positive and negative. So this forms what we call as a battery. What is the definition of a battery? Type it in the chat window. What is the definition of a battery? What is a battery? A battery is a collection of cells or a group of cells that is correct, okay? So basically, current flows, current, this, this is the path of electricity. First of all, draw the path. So they are saying that which bulb, if fused, will result in two other bulbs lighting up in the circuit. So I want two bulbs to glow and one bulb can remain fused. Yeah, what is the, uh, let me see the answers which I got. Some people said B, some people said A. Okay. Now, so for this question, basically, if you notice, bulb A and Kushal has joined. So bulb A and B are in parallel and C and D are in series. Okay. Now, Kushal, I can see you join. Arush, please turn on your video camera. Mohana, turn on your video camera. Kushal is still joining. Mohana, turn on your video. So basically, in a series circuit, if any one appliance fuses, the entire circuit stops working. Series means what? All the appliances are connected one after the other. So in a chain. So if one part of the chain breaks, then the entire circuit will fail. So definitely it is not option, not bulb C or bulb D. It has to be either A or B. Okay, understood this first. 
So the bulbs have to be in parallel. If they are in series, the entire circuit will stop working. So definitely it is either option A or option B. So one second, I have still children entering. So the correct option is option B. So if B fuses, I'll show you. Suppose B fuses, okay. So which means this part of the circuit is off. So yeah, no problem. So current will flow. I'm just changing the color. So current will flow like this. A will lit up and then C and D will also lit up. Right? Okay. Okay, for children who joined in late, uh, I can see uh, still there are children joining in, right? So the correct answer of this option is option B. This is a question from the series and, you know, parallel circuit. That's it. Acha Xavier set up two electrical circuits, P and Q, as shown below. The bulbs and batteries used were identical. All the bulbs lighted up when the switches were closed. What variables must he keep constant if he wants to find out if the number of batteries will affect the brightness of the bulb? Read the question carefully. These are difficult questions because they are level two questions. But I think that is the, you know, crux of the paper. Try it out yourself, everybody. Definitely, I will explain. So what variables must he keep constant if he wants to find out the, if the number of batteries will affect the brightness of the bulb? Yeah, I got the answers from a few children. Okay, I got it from Arush, Ashaz, and Mohana. Okay, so here we see that we have two circuits, P and Q, right? So what is the difference between circuit P and circuit Q? So the, here there is one cell. And here we have, you know, two cells. Okay, this is the only difference. And what, are, so we have two bulbs here. And here also we have two bulbs. This is a bulb, right? So the difference between both of these circuits only is in the number of cells, right? So what variables must he keep constant if he wants to find out if the number of batteries will affect the brightness of the bulb. So, so for doing this question, it is the number of bulbs, yes. Okay, then we have the number of batteries, no. The brightness of the bulb, no. And the arrangement of the bulb. So the correct option is option B. Arrangement of the bulb, yes, because if the bulbs are in parallel, they will grow in glow in you know one brightness. If the bulbs are in series, they will grow in glow in another brightness. So yes, the arrangement of the bulbs, which means that whether they are in parallel or series, yes, the brightness of the bulbs will depend upon whether they are in parallel or series. Right? Okay. I'm not looking into who gave correct answer and who gave. This demo class is not about who is, you know, this is not a test. Jack connected a simple electrical circuit using materials W, X, Y, and Z with different combinations. He recorded the results as shown below. Uh, you cannot see the options, but I, I will write down the options for you. Somehow this has gone black this is no and then this is y and z and this is no now tell it got darkened i don't know why which of the following materials are electrical conductors i got the answer from mohana I got answers from Mohona, from Shravya, from Ashas. Aradhya, try. 
Arush, are you there? Arush, could you turn on your video, please? We don't allow children without the video in the class. Yes, Arush, try this answer. What is the answer of this question? Okay, now I got the right answer from most of you. So X and Y, the bulb does not light up. Y, W and Z, the bulb lights up. So if you notice it, so uh, W and X, so which I can write then W, X, the bulb lights up, right? And here I have Z, right? So W, X and Z are good conductors of electricity. Y is not a conductor and therefore the correct option is D. This is a very simple question. I don't think any of you have doubts in this. So do the next one. Look at the, this is from the actual Olympiad paper. Look at the circuit diagram given below. When one of the bulb is not working, the other three bulbs will not light up. Which is the bulb that is not working? Okay, I got the answer from Shravya. Ashaz, correct. I got the answer. I got not correct. I got the answer. Arush, Mohana, your option. Okay, I got it from Mohana also. So I think most of you have done it correctly. So the so the whenever so this is the positive terminal of the cell. So current will flow in this direction, right? So basically, here if you notice, we have two parts of the circuit. This is one part, and this is the other part, right? So just by looking at this straightforward in one minute, I can say that the answer is B four. So if bulb B four does not work, everything else will. The the other part of the bulbs will not work. Why? Because the battery, this is the battery, right? So the battery is connected with the bulb B4. So if the bulb B4 stops working, then the entire circuit will simply stop working. Right? Okay. Achha. Do this question. Which of the diagram shows a circuit with four open switches? Which of the switches should be closed? so that only one bulb in the circuit is able to light up most brightly. Take some time, Not a, this is not a race. It's important to get it correctly, okay? Take some time, I'll give you some time. Don't worry. So first step, as I told you, you see there are two cells here, okay? So mark the direction of the electricity. Draw the circuit in your copy first. I don't know how you are doing it, but I would first draw the circuit in my copy, mark the arrows, and then I will tell the answer. That way you will never get wrong. Okay, I'm getting many answers. Uh, you know, I got answers from uh, most of you. Uh, yeah. Okay, Ashas, Mohana, Shravya, Arush. Okay, I got it from Aradhya. Try, Aradhya. It's very important to participate. Otherwise, you know, you'll not get, you know, value from it. Okay, now. So, what is given? Which of the switches should be closed? so that only one bulb in the circuit is able to light up most brightly. This is the question, right? So I have to close, which of the switch do I have to close so that one bulb lights up the most brightly? So to understand that, I can see straightforward that uh, 
current flows through here. So yes, I have to, so switch A, I have to close, no doubt about it. So current uh, will flow like this. So D, I have to close, uh, switch numbers D, I have to close. And for current, so the A, B and D are the switches which I have to close. So the correct option of this question is option C, right? So this is how we, you know, go about with the class. But in the actual class, what we will do is that we, in one class, I will explain all the topic and, you know, the basic fundamentals and the formula and everything. And in the next class, we will solve a paper. Any questions, any doubts, you know, before we close, we're running just about to finish up with the time. Anything, anything you want to ask, please type in the chat window. I'll try my best to answer. Any questions, any doubts, anybody? So Arush, Ashas, Mohan. Ashas, you are in class four, right? Okay, Mohana, Shravya, anybody, any question? How was, how was the demo? Did you understand? Anybody went off to sleep? No. Interesting? So this is how we go with the class, but my classes are usually extremely interactive, noisy classes, in fact. So I hope to see you all, you know, in the actual, in the real classes, which will happen very soon from Tuesday. We will all do very good. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody, for being through the demo. Thank you. The syllabus will be given in the link. Thank you. Thank you, Ashas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Bye.